my Lord here it will be glorious I do declare for God's own son will be the leading one at that meeting in the end hallelujah he is coming soon give the Lord a hand clap of praise oh what a shout will rise across the vaulted sky when Jesus comes assurance. Page 181. Let's sing about it. Just worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
forward to this camp meeting for some time. I have tried ever since I have been pastor here to get Brother Zane Estes to come preach and he is well sought after and uh, because of uh, other circumstances he was unable to go uh, over into the Philippines I believe it was and and uh, we're blessed to have him. I've, I've heard him preach for the first time I believe it was 20, 21 years ago. He came uh, to Van Buren. I think he had preached at a, a youth function and uh, our pastor Brother Bobby Johnson uh, invited him to come preach uh, either for a youth revival or for our, our summer camp meeting. And uh, he's coming right now to minister. Would you welcome this morning, Brother Zane Estes. Appreciate that. God bless you, brother. Amen. You love the Lord this morning? Amen. Amen. Glad to be with you today. And I am looking forward to this as well and believing the Lord to help us 
in just the few days that we have together. I know we say, wow, you know, Sunday through Wednesday, that's going to be a long time. You're going you're to do like that and it's going to be over with. So I, I just, I, I encourage every single one of us, let's make sure that we put our minds focused and set and look and just come in with a heart that's ready. Because there's, I'm not a prophet nor the son of a prophet, but I can tell you one thing, there's going to be things this week that's going to be there to distract you. It's kind of quiet in here for Presbyterian church. There's going to be things out there that's going to try to distract you, okay? So what you got to do is you got to look through that and you got to say, Lord, no matter what may happen out there, God, I'm putting my mind on this right here because we need God's hand to help us. We need the hand of the Lord to move upon us. We are in desperate days. Can you say, man? We are in trying times. And if we've ever heard from heaven, we need to hear from heaven now. Ah, my, my. I do want to say how much I appreciate your pastor. Amen. Brother Daniel, we were a lot younger back then together. We were, I don't know how long ago that was, but I do remember that. And I actually remember coming to the Howell Assembly of God Church many moons ago as well. I was a lot younger back then myself. And, uh, well, that means you were too. Hallelujah. Amen. So I have some familiar faces, some new faces, but good to meet if I've never met you before and good to make your acquaintance again if it's been if it's been oh almost 20 years I suppose now and I realize that uh, this week we may have some folks from all the way from Van Buren come on over maybe from Alma come on over and visitors around when we're not sure who or where they may come from but we appreciate them being here but ultimately uh, let's let's make sure that we come and there's one thing to say well I came check it off the list it's another thing to come in and really be engaged in the service so I just encourage you this this week. Give it all you got. I don't know what the rest of this year may hold, but how many of you know that 2020 has been quite un unpredictable? <laughs> Every, every church at the beginning of 2020, every, not every church, most churches at the beginning of 2020, everybody had that theme, you know, oh, clear vision, 2020 vision. That was, a, that was probably the worst line we could ever use for any church because nobody could have seen some of the things coming that's come this year. We just didn't know where it came from. I know the Lord is still in control, though. I said God is still in control, though. And it's, listen, it's, it's never been the Canaanites that held back the hand of God. It was always the Israelites that held his hand back. It wasn't as if God looked at Canaanites and Jebusites and said, oh, no, I'm just not powerful enough to move upon there. No, God's always been able to defeat that. But the Lord looks at his own people. And he said, because we wouldn't call out to him. But he said, if we would, he said, if we would call out to him and cry unto him, then we would hear from him. He would hear from heaven. He'd hear our prayers, forgive our sins, and he would heal this land. And that's what we need the Lord to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you again for the accommodations and the meals and everything. God bless you so much. If you have your Bibles this morning, and I know that you do, turn with me, please, to the book of Matthew, chapter number 5. Matthew, chapter number 5 this morning. Let's start in verse number 1. Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 1. As your pastor said, I had originally planned on being at the uh, uh, Asia Pacific Theological Seminary. I had a three-week leadership training thing over there, and, and that's over in the Philippines. And, uh, of course, COVID hit, and that canceled. And I said, well, you know, Lord, that door shut, but I know you've got something open. And I'm telling you, not long after that, I got an email from your pastor. And, Brother Estes, is there any way... And I thought, you know, the Lord, you're in this. Thank you, Jesus. So I, I appreciate the invitation so much. Amen. If we could, if you're physically able, can we stand for the reading of God's Word together there in Matthew chapter number 5? God's Word, it, it reads like this. Verse 1, seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. He opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I'll read a few more of those, but that's the one I want to look at this morning. Verse 4 said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. One more time, verse number three, please. God's word says this to you and me. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. I want to speak to us this morning for a few minutes 
I don't know how long I'll preach. I suppose that, that really doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> I'm on Eastern time zone, so my stomach's an hour ahead of yours, so fear not, I say unto thee. Okay, relax. I want to speak to us this morning for just a little while on this thought. When it's blessed to be broke. When it's blessed to be broke. Would you be so kind to slip your hands to heaven, your voices to heaven, and even your hearts to heaven, and ask the good Lord to have his way in this house. Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, for this congregation. I thank you for this church, God. I thank you for this pastor. I thank you for the vision that goes forth right here, and I thank you for this land, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that your will would simply be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let me not speak simply about you, but Lord, let me speak for you this morning. Let your word go forward. It will not return void. Let it prevail. Let it multiply today. I pray, God. God, anoint me, God. Anoint every word spoken, said, and done. And for this, I give you glory, and I give you honor, and I give you praise. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray, and everyone said amen. 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 You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. This is normally where we say, shake the hand of the person beside you. We can't say that anymore. I don't know what we do now. I'll greet the brethren with a holy elbow, if that's what you do around here. I heard of a story one time, and of course it's a little fictitious story, but it was an old Chinese teacher, and he was talking to some young students. And he said, once upon a time, there was a very old dog, and there was a young dog. The older dog walked up to the younger dog, and the younger dog was running round and round in circles, trying to catch his own tail. The older dog looked at the younger dog, he said, what are you doing? The younger dog finally stopped as he was trying to catch his breath, and he said, found that all happiness is in the tail of a dog and if I can just catch that tail then I too will be happy the older dog stepped back and he said hmm I must agree happiness is found in the tail of that dog he said but I have learned this that the more that I chase after it the more it runs away from me. But if I'll simply go about doing what I need to do, it has a way of following me. Can you say man? Now, beloved, can I just say like you, I don't believe happiness is found in the tail of a dog. But I will say this today. We have a generation that's running round and round in circles looking for something to make them happy. And no matter where they go and no matter what they do and no matter where they turn to and no matter what they post and no matter who they follow, they still have not found happiness. Can I tell you, beloved, happiness is not found in chasing after the things of this world. But joy unspeakable is still found in a man that would surrender his life to God Almighty and let him be Lord of Lord and King of Kings in his life. Can you say amen? You will never find happiness if you're running to and fro trying to find something to pick you up, to try to push you forward. You've got to set your eyes on the one true living God and say, Lord, you will alone are my light and my life and my help. Can somebody say amen? amen. It's a world gone wild looking for something to make them happy. They cannot find it because they're looking for it in all the wrong places. Today, Jesus teaches you and me something that this world knows nothing about. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is a key verse as he preaches on these beatitudes. Now, this word, the beatitudes, the blessedness, amen, it's kind of hard to translate in English, amen, from, from, from the original Greek, amen. Yes, it would mean happy, but it means more than that, friend. It means giving you everything that you need. Can I tell you, when you find Jesus, you find everything you really need. It's not Jesus and, it's not Jesus plus, but when you find him, you can say, thank the Lord, this is what I've been looking for. <laughs> Jesus says, blessed when a man is, not blessed what a man has out there. But that's contrary to what this world teaches. Because what the world says is if you have things, then you're happy. Blessed is the man that has more toys than his neighbor. Blessed is the person that has more apps than his other friend. Blessed is the young person who has more people following them with thumbs up. That's never where you find your blessing. Amen. It's not blessed is the man that has. It's blessed is the man that is. Amen. 
it's not, it's not brains and bronze or beauty or bucks or anything like that. It's blessed is the man that is. He is holy because Jesus is in him. He is satisfied because Jesus is in him. He's found what this world says he cannot have. True joy and that peace that passes, that passes all understanding. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you think happiness is going to be found just because you come across another rage, you're looking for it in the wrong place, come back and let Jesus be everything to your life again. Let Jesus be the one that'll pick you up in the morning and start you on your way and put your head on your pillow at night and say, thank the Lord that he's led me and proved me and showed me the way and provided for me. That's the blessed man. Amen. I had a friend, he passed away just a couple of weeks ago. I met him many years ago. We've been on mission trips together. In fact, the first time we ever met, we were on our way there to Cuba. And we've been in Guatemala and Costa Rica together, every place you can imagine. And he told me, he said, as a young man, he said he had a terrible childhood. His father never accepted him as, a, as his own biological son. He always accused his mother, that man's wife. The father always accused his wife of going out and stepping out on him. In fact, whenever the young child was born, his name's the boy, the, the man that just died, my dear friend, his name was Ralph Lee Dillard. And the father, they looked at the father and they said, what's the child's name? And he said, it's not my baby. It's the neighbor's. The neighbor's name was Ralph Lee. He said, call the child Ralph Lee Dillard. He's growing up, he said, my world was cursed with that. I was under that, I was under that stigma all my life. He said, it wasn't until I was a grown man that I went to a family reunion. And he said, they looked at me and they said, you're the spitting image of your dad, the man that denied him as his own son. He said, I went into the army when I was an 18-year-old boy just so I could try to get away from it. I didn't care where they sent me, bring me to Vietnam. He said, what did I have to live for anyway? But they shipped me to Germany instead. He said, there in Germany, he said, Zane, I went to, I went to every hellhole you could think of in, in Germany's worst red light districts all trying to find something to fill that void in my heart. But Brother Hall, he said, I could never find it. It was never there. The void was still there and the peace was never there. I come back home. He's from Florida. He said to me, he said, I'm walking the streets one night and I walk past a little old Pentecostal church and I hear a sound that I'd never heard in my life. The Lord had woke up that pastor in the middle of the night and told that man, go over to your church and begin to pray. And as that man began to pray in the wee hour of the morning, Ralph Lee Dillard said, I walked by that church and I heard that sound and something inside of me said, that's what you've been looking for all of your life. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. He said, I went in and I cried and I broke before the Lord and I found the peace that I'd been searching for. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Blessed are the broke. Blessed is the man who's poor in spirit. Jesus teaches this to you and me today, friend. Until a man realizes, I cannot find joy outside of Jesus, he will never inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. When a man comes to the Lord and says, well, <clears throat> now, now Jesus, <clears throat> Okay, 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 Jesus. I, I'm probably not where I need to be, but I'm a whole lot better than they are. You do not know what Jesus means when he says poor in spirit. The word that he, there's different words in Greek for poor there. One, in fact, the word like for the, the little widow woman who, who gives the widow's might, the word they use for poor, that poor widow, that's not the same word here. Because the word here is literally broke, busted, disgusted, nothing, zilch, zero, I have nothing. And that's exactly the way a man has to come to the Lord. He cannot come with a bargaining chip. He cannot come and say, I'm a little bit good. He has to come and say, Lord, there is nothing inside of me that's worth saving but by your mercy and by your blood and by your grace would you forgive me of my sin a man has to get broke before the Lord will bring him in oh Lord help us blessed is the man that realizes I am nothing without God people have said to me before they said brother Estes is it hard to get people saved? I said, nope. 
Hard things getting somebody lost. Say amen. I mean, from church to church, nobody's lost. I mean, you got young people, and they just soon play on their cell phones the whole time during service. They could be up here worshiping God, and they could be out there sending texts. And I'm not throwing off on any one people group, but all I'm telling you, beloved, their heart's not in it. And somehow in the back of their mind, they think that they're still going to heaven because they serve a God somehow or another on Sunday morning, but don't even talk to them Monday through Saturday. Let me introduce to you a man that'll change your life. Let me introduce to you a man that'll give you a new road. Let me introduce you to somebody that'll take away the guilt and the pain and the stress of yesteryear his name is Jesus but you gotta come broke you gotta come saying Lord I am nothing on my own there is a bankruptcy that that man has to come to now honey we're talking about here we're not talking about financial the Bible never puts a premium on just being poor financially that's not what it's speaking about here we're to have compassion on the poor, yes. Never does it teach that poverty equates with blessingness like that. That's not what we're talking about. And, and not, by the way, neither is it talking about a just a poor spirit. It says poor in spirit. Some people walk inside the church and they got a face, I mean, long as a saxophone. It looks like they've been baptized in persimmon juice. And they're just, I mean, what, what some folks call humility, God calls poor posture. Say amen. And they're, they're just so humble. I would I would worship but that's not what he's talking about but there is a brokenness and a bankruptcy inside of that man that says I need God to move listen beloved man is made of body mind spirit with that body he senses the world beneath him with that mind he senses the world around him but only with his spirit can he sense the God above him and until that man comes to that place where he says God I am nothing without you and his spirit is never regenerated amen so long as we're playing bargaining chips with God I'm telling you beloved not only when it comes to salvation when it comes to getting a hold of God when we hold back he holds back if we want God to move we cannot look back and say my didn't God move in the old sanctuary you gotta let that go and say Lord I need you in this sanctuary I need you here I need you now we got family on their way to hell now we got a community on its way to hell now we got a nation that don't know which way to go as they ever was a time where we stood up and said Lord we need it's now! We can come in starchy. We can come in waiting for somebody else to do it. We can come in saying, no, I'm a little too dignified. Fine, all those things you do. I'm telling you, until that man admits with God, I have no equity with you, Lord. I have no bargaining with chips with you, Father. I'm just laying on your mercy and asking you to move in my need. When man, when God sees men that are bankrupt like that, oh, hallelujah, he responds to the need. I said he responds to that need. He responds to that need. Somebody say amen. We've got to come back and say, Lord, Jesus, do that in me. There will be no pride in heaven. We cannot have proud peacocks saying, I don't. Yes, we do need God. Yes, we do. I was talking to a brother Thursday. We were driving home together. And I said, you always remember this. A man that will not pray, whether he admits it or not, what he says is this. A man that will not pray says, God, I do not need you. He doesn't come out, but that's what he says in the spirit. A man that won't pray says, God, I do not need you. A man that will not give says, God, I do not trust you. A man that gives says, God, I trust you. You're going to meet my needs according to your riches and glory. And a man that prays says, God, I cannot do this without you. I'm telling you, church, we've got to come back again and say, Lord God, break up this fallow ground. Take me, God, and show me, God, where I am with you. Deal with me, O oh Lord, and let me see my need of you greater than I ever did. Blessed is the man that sees his own need. Blessed is the man that realizes he needs God to touch him again. Blessed is the congregation that says, Lord God, we need you like we never have before. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed is that man that's willing to be bankrupt before the Lord that says, in me there is no good thing. I need you, God. Amen. Blessed is that one that realizes it's not him, it's not her. It's me. 
You ever seen people, oh Lord, help me. I'm going to say this here, I think. I'm not talking about anybody you know. I'm talking about people that you know that you know, okay? There you go. This person knows how to raise their kids, and that person knows how to raise their kids. I've said to a couple of them before, you know, if you just, if you guys would trade kids, you, you'd have perfect families, wouldn't you? <laughs> you know how to take care of theirs, they know how to take care of yours. Friends, sometimes we do that in our own hearts. We got the answer for him. We got the answer for them. We got the answer. It comes back and saying, me, oh God, where do I need to be with the Lord? God, let it begin with me. Oh, but Brother Estes, that's why we got a pastor. That's what we're paying for. You're not paying a pastor. for. In fact, we don't pay for this. We pray for this. It's not just one man that can play a piano and get up behind the pulpit. No, sir, thank God that you're gifted with that. But it's going to take whosoever will and everlast one of us that would. Everybody's been given the measure of faith. And if one could put a thousand in the flight. The Bible said 10 would put 10,000, 2 would put 10,000 in the flight. That means we've got to come together on this thing. Amen. Isaiah said it like this in Isaiah 6 and 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And I said, woe is me, verse 5, for I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of an unclean uh, people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. Now, if you were to follow that beginning at the chapter 1, here's how Isaiah starts out his message. Woe unto them! Woe unto them! Oh yeah, woe unto them! And then he sees God. You know what he says? Honor me. Honor me. Beloved, probably been a little bit of water under the bridge since 18 years I've been here. Probably been a few things that's come up and come down. I don't know. I don't know your business. And you know me good enough that do know me, you know I ain't going to get around your pastor and say, hey, what's going on so I can talk about it. But friend, can I tell you, if we're lingering on things of yesteryear and pointing fingers at people that could have and should have and would have, we're never going to find God's will for us today. We've got to say, Lord God, we're coming before you. And this is not a what's right. This is not a who's right. This is not a them right, me right. This is God, you're right. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come broke before the Lord. I'm just going to come open before the Lord. They can point fingers all they like don't care. Let them say what they want to say. Let them post what they want to post. Jesus is just about to come. The Lord's about to return. And I want to be found doing. I want to be found ready. I want to be found right. I want to God we can have hearts again. And to say, Lord, let yesterday be yesterday. Let me be broke before the living God. Even now, oh God. Amen. <laughs> we, we read of a Syrophoenician woman. She comes to Jesus. She's got a daughter that's possessed. Not only is she a pagan woman, she's a practicing pagan woman. But yet in her, in her need, she comes to the living God. You know the story. She says, Lord, he says, no, it's, it's not fit to give this bread because it's meant for the show. It's not fit to give it to dogs. Well, she says back to him, yes, but even the dogs eat from the crumbs of your table. Now, this is one of those things we don't catch when we just read it in our English Bibles. But if you were to go back and study that in Greek, whenever, whenever Jesus looks at her and he says it's not fit to give this to dogs, it's a neutral noun. And all what that would mean is the picture there is a cute, cuddly, housebroke dog. Just cute little cute that's not the word she says back to Jesus that says back to him even the puts an article in front of the dogs now that totally changes the meaning of that word because now it becomes a masculine noun and the word that's meant back to him is not a cute cuddly little puppy but it's a skinny scrawny mange infested rotten back alley dog and when Jesus here, oh Lord, oh, I got a little tight right there. 
Amen. And when Jesus hears back to her and he says, what? I see what you're saying. Go home. Your daughter's healed. Everything's over. He sees a woman that realizes, Lord God, you may call me a dog. Let me just put one up on that and say, God, I'm the worst of the worst. But with you, there's mercy and love. Oh, hallelujah. I want to God we let our pride go. I want to God we let our feelings go and say, Lord, it's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of pra somebody giving praise. Somebody say, Lord, I need you. Lord God, whatever it takes, don't take your spirit from us. Blessed. Blessed is the man that's willing to get broke before me. Blessed is the man that doesn't care if he's the first or the last at the altar. Amen. Blessed is that man. Yeah. I'm not talking about folks that try to put on some show to wear out the saints. We've seen that, and that's not what we're talking about. But blessed is the man whose don't care button finally gets switched and he says I don't care all I know is I need God I need God in my family I need God in my home I need God in my church I need God now I need God here I need Lord to move now and I need the Lord to move here and Lord God I'll be broke before you and I'll admit God I can't do enough but if you would help me I'm not going to look back at you and you some you some oh Lord look how I went on that one week fast look how I went on that three week fast all of those things God I'm throwing off to the side and saying, God, you ain't got to, but in your mercy, would you? Would you show your mercy and show your love unto my need? Amen. Amen. If there's anybody that could have relied on his pedigree, it would have been Paul. He could say, now listen, Hebrew of Hebrews, you know. <clears throat> and you know what tribe I'm from, don't you? Benjamin. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, by the way, my degree. I studied at the feet of Gamaliel. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, Roman citizen? No, I didn't buy my birth. I was freeborn. And there's two ways you had Roman citizenship. You could either purchase it or you could have a family member before you that purchased it. And if you were born under that family member, then you were freeborn. And it was always a little more prestigious to be freeborn. He's freeborn Roman. And Brother Morgan, he looks at every one of those things. And he says, those things that I thought were gain, I count loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. I'm taking all those things, and I hope somebody to help me preach this morning, because I'm just trying to tell us today, we got to quit walking in here saying, God, Lord, maybe if so-and-so and somebody else would get, we got to say, God, it's up to me, and whatever I've got to do, and whatever I've got to go, and whoever i got to talk to, Lord, God, so let it be. Well, Brother Esther, uh, maybe I didn't start it. It didn't matter. Did you start it? I just want to know, are you tired of it and want it to end? Just make it right and move forward with the Lord and say, God, now is the time. Today is the day. Breathe on us once again. Yes, amen. He realizes he's got his degree, but it knocks the legs out of his pride. It knocks the legs out of his freestanding. I realize there's some people, they're naturally gifted with charisma. They can stand up and they've got that Colgate smile and let me tell you something, beloved. You've, you put that big smile at the judgment seat, you'll never make it to heaven. You can't say, well, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty good guy. I've said this before. You cannot judge a piece of trash in a ditch and say, because I'm bigger than that, I'm better than that. Beloved, we cannot say because they do this and we don't. No, no, no. What about right here? What about our hearts? What about our lives between God? Anytime you play the comparison game, let me promise you, you play the comparison game, you will always lose. Amen. You'll always find something, somebody below you. And you'll always find somebody above you. But when you'll find that you'll just say, God, I want to be broke in your presence. I want to admit my need in your presence. Then God himself willingly comes down and says, I will touch you. 
I'm not measuring myself by what that person does. I'm not measuring myself by how much that church shouts or doesn't shout. God, this is between me and you. God, I'm not going to lie down in the gutter and measure myself against some piece of trash. This is between me and you and the Word of God. And Jesus, I'm praying today, God, would you get a hold of us again and break our hearts one more time before you. And we don't mind pouring out praise before the Lord. Dear mercy, this ain't some kind of contest where we see who's got the prettiest voice and who can sing the loudest or the fastest or the highest or whatever it may be. It's men and women once again holding on to the unchanging hand of God and saying, Jesus, in the last of last days, pour out your spirit upon us. Save us, oh God, and have mercy. And God, break us and shake us and mold us and make us. And we might be pleasing unto the Lord. And we might know your will. And we might follow your will. And we might find your will. And we might finish your will. And we might hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Amen. It's about the time. It's about the time, man, we start patting ourselves on the back. God brings me overseas again. And I remind my heart of how insignificant we really are. I remember one year I was there in Kenya. And there was a brother there, Nai Young. Nai Young has got shrapnel wounds all across his face. He's missing a kneecap. We get talking one day and he tells me. But the Cody says he was talking to another man. He won him to the Lord. He said, I'm just training him, talk, pouring into him. Well, those Africans, they go on miles and miles of walks. You know, it's not just like a walk of a block. And in, in, in that walk, he said, we just kind of separated from each other for a little bit. And it was at that point where a landmine that was set for me, for the Muslims that was meant to kill me, he stepped on it and said to me, it killed my friend. But that shrapnel come and hit me in the face and took out my kneecap. He said, now I will provide for his children. I mean, that's just, that's just, he said, that's the right thing to do. I'll take care of his kids financially for him. And I remember I looked at him, Brother Randy, I said, how does it make you feel toward the Muslims? He looked back at me and said, Brother Zain, Jesus loved a Muslim. Jesus died for the Muslim. I loved a Muslim. I died for them. I remember I got down and I prayed, Brother Hall. And I said, I put my hand on that preacher and I didn't pray, oh God, help him. He didn't know what I was praying, but I was praying, oh God, whatever you put in him, put some of that in me. I'm telling you, friend, it comes a point again in our hearts. We say, Lord God, I admit I need you like never before. I have nothing on my own. I'm broke and bankrupt. I need God. Church, on this Sunday morning, I believe God is trying to talk to us once again. We need to open our hearts to Him like never before. We need to pour out our hearts like never before. Oh, Brother Estes, I, I'm just not that emotional of a person. Don't give me that no emotional of a person. Some of you men, you, you kill one of them deer with 30,000 antler points, they'll hear you shouting from here to Canada. You know they would. You emotional of what you emotional about. You get excited of what you get excited. When you, something breaks your heart, that means it touched your heart. And I'm telling you, we need to come back again and say, God, do that in our homes. Don't ever let me get callous with the Lord. Don't ever let me get callous with God. Lord, take me and turn me upside down and turn me around again. And Lord God, I willingly admit, I bring you nothing good of my own self. But God, in brokenness and bankruptcy, God, can I tell you, it's, it's not that when we speak of brokenness and speak of bankruptcy before the Lord, it's not the way of doom and gloom. It's the way of blessings. The Lord said, blessed is that man. Amen. The man is blessed when he realizes. The man is blessed when he realizes his need of God. The man, blessed is the man that realizes he needs God. Amen. Blessed is the heart that says, I need you. Pastor, I'm in western Ukraine, Transcarpathia region there. And another brother and me are walking through some of those remote, remote, remote villages. Some of them, they told us, they said, we've never seen Americans here before. This is the first Americans ever. Well, we go, we're walking through this one old village. There was an 88-year-old woman there. We just get talking to her. I didn't know. But she had never heard the gospel a day in her life. 
88 years old. We spoke to her. She accepted the Lord right that day, repented, I mean cried, wept. And man, you never seen a woman with so much joy on her face. And she kept doing like that. She said, he's here. He's here. I know he's here. I know he's here. She said, I'll never let him go. I'll never let him go. He's here. He's here. Friend, whether you're eight, whether you're 88, younger or older, oh, God, help us to open our hearts again and say, God, move like you want to move again. Do what you want to do again. Touch like you want to touch again. Lord, come down like you want to come down. Move like you want to move. Can I tell you this? Isaiah 57 and 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and the holy places with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite man. He says, if I can find a man that's humble, if I can find a heart that's contrite, if I can find a heart that's pleading with me, I will revive them. I will restore them. I will renew them. I will refresh them. Can somebody give God a hand clap of praise? Amen. All evangelism really is. There's one broke man looking at one bankrupt man and saying, hey, I know where bread is if you're hungry. We say, yeah, let's go find that together. So you know what, church? We've got just a little bit of time together. But if we ever needed a move of God, we need it now. Amen. We need it now. I don't know the history. I ain't got to know the history. That ain't what it's about. But all I know is we come in together. And we get in the trenches together. And we cry out for God to move together. There's something about when we seek the Lord in unity together. And when all of us say, God, with a contrite heart and with a broken spirit, we admit our need before you. We admit our brokenness before you. We admit our bankruptcy before you. God begins to bless. And God begins to pour out. And God begins to heal. And I believe I'm in a place this morning that wants to see God heal. You say heal physically. Yes, physically. But can I tell you, there's some wounds that's not on the outside. Sometimes there's wounds right up here. Sometimes there's wounds deep inside. Can I tell you the same God that can open a blinded eye is the same God that can heal a scar from 20 years ago, can heal a hurt from 15 years ago. Somebody give him praise in the house of the Lord. I'm closing this morning. I believe God brought a preacher by and he reminds us if we will be broke before him, if we will open our heart to him, not just go through the motions, not just the down on one knee, up on the other, not just the not my job mentality. Well, that's for those other praying. No, we need you. Can I tell right up here, guys? We need you. I believe I speak on behalf. We need you. I've told my wife, when I go into a service, that church expects me to give it my best. Can I just turn that around and say, you know what? Not only are you expecting me, I'm expecting you. Okay? And I don't mean this braggadociously, but I said, but they need me at my best. Can I tell you, I need you at your best. Because evidently, church, oh, go ahead and say it. I feel like I can, I just feel an openness. I feel like I can say it. If we just keep going through the motion, if we keep just doing what we've always done, we're going to keep getting what we've always got. Somebody's got to pull down heaven. Somebody's got to cast out him. Somebody's got to stand in a gap and make up a hedge. Somebody's got to say, Lord God, hear us. We need your presence again we need your life again we need your mercy again we need God and God looks out and he says and I need you I need you to open your heart to me again I need you to let God have full control again I need you to not run through the motions but to let him have his way again Blessed are the poor, broken in spirit. Stay
stand with me all over this house, church. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Sometimes the worst effect of a lackadaisical spirit is we don't realize how lax we become. Sometimes the worst effects of the effect of a complacent spirit is we don't realize how complacent we have become. That's why we need God to come in and break up fallow ground this morning. That's why I'm asking you on this Sunday morning and I know there's needs from the back to the front, from the left to the right, all the way from the sound room to the pulpit. But we need to ask God again, God, break us. Shake us. Mold us. Make us. Don't let us leave this house the same way we've come in. God, let us hear from heaven one more time. Heal. Heal this land. Can we come all the way from the back to the front? Can we find, find ourselves an altar this morning? Can we get, begin to ask the Lord to do that in a personal way inside of our own hearts? God, do that inside of me, Jesus. Jesus. of a contrite and a humble spirit. You said you revived God the humble heart.